Welcome to Chapter 6 of How Moons of Darcelon Was Made, the retro pixel art video game that paradoxically looks completely different from other modern games with a retro pixel aesthetic. In this chapter, we'll talk about the character controller and the animation managers that ensure the characters have smooth and natural movement. How are character controllers made in 2D games? You have an animation manager that is responsible for updating the animation at each moment with the appropriate frame. This frame is usually a complete frame of the entire character. That's the visual aspect. In terms of control, a rigid body from the physics engine is usually added and forces are typically applied for movement. As for how the character aligns with the ground, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's done in the way I'm about to describe because I experimented with these techniques years ago and it's what was used at the time. You place a collider and let it fall and collide with the ground thanks to the gravity applied by the physics engines. And when lateral forces are applied, the rigid body slides smoothly. I'm not sure if this is still done this way. It's how I implemented it at the beginning in my early games. But I eventually abandoned this method because it required the ramps to connect perfectly with each other and the character could easily get stuck on small steps. Now, in this type of game, instead of a constant speed, forces are usually applied to the rigid body. This creates progressive acceleration and inertia that prevents us from stopping instantly. I have to say that I hate platformers with inertia. They're horrible to play. I love inertia-based games where you control flying things, birds, ships, and the like, but with humanoid characters? Sorry, but I don't get it. But Super Mario Bros. has inertia, and everyone loves it. I don't know what you're talking about. The only Mario game that exists is Donkey Kong. You don't like Sonic either? Sonic is an amazing game, if only inertia didn't completely ruin it. Now seriously, there are fantastic platformers with inertia that everyone loves, but I just can't stand them. How does Moons of Darcelon manage animations? The animation manager is more of a manager of animation managers because each part of the body has its own animation manager or animator. There are five body parts in each character. The legs, the torso, each arm separately, and the head. All of them are connected by a simplified system of bones or attachments included in the metadata of each frame. Each part has its own animation manager and a script that controls which animation should be triggered at any given moment. In the case of the legs, it's simple. There's an animation for running, crouching, jumping forward, jumping in place, etc. This is the main animator, and many animations like those for the torso and arms are often synchronized with the animation running on the legs. However, in the case of the torso, there aren't just one, but five running animations, for example. Why? Because the animation that is triggered depends on where you're looking, which is determined by the right stick or in the case of AI-controlled characters, depending on where their target is. Each torso animation has a cycle that synchronizes with the leg animation frame by frame and can switch to another animation with a different angle at any moment while remaining synchronized with the legs. It can even turn to face the other direction. This allows the characters to run in one direction while looking in the opposite direction. The head works similarly to the torso, as it can look left or right independently of the rest of the body, which is achieved by inverting the X scale of the sprite. The movement of the antennas is managed by monitoring the coordinates of the head in the world in each frame. This way, we can calculate its speed and apply the most appropriate movement animation. Initially, I tried applying physics to the antennas, but they were too small and the results weren't good. So I ended up creating animations for the four main directions, up, down, left, and right each in two different speeds. Let's talk about the walking animation. How is movement usually managed in indie games? Once you have the animation, you set a movement speed and either apply forces or assign a speed to the character. Speed that more or less matches the speed of the legs. This often results in the dreaded sliding effect. You need to be a very good animator and aware of this undesirable optical effect when creating your animation to adapt it to a specific movement speed. How is movement managed in Moons of Darcelon? Instead of applying a force or speed simultaneously with triggering an animation, the animation is triggered with a specific update speed, and the movement is determined by metadata in each frame. Each frame can advance a different distance than the previous one. Once the frames are drawn, you can observe how much they should advance relative to the previous one and assign a different movement value for that frame. 
in some frames, it might not be necessary to move even a single pixel. This approach results in a much more natural movement, where within the overall movement speed, there are small accelerations and decelerations. Additionally, it's perfectly precise since the feet never slide. Moreover, you can change the character's running speed simply by adjusting the animation frame rate. This is how the Darsenouts adjust their speed depending on whether they're leisurely walking, following you from a distance or up close, or walking in dim light. This, combined with the fact that the head can look left or right, and the torso can tilt independently based on where they're looking, provides a fluidity and variety of movements that give the characters a lot of expressiveness and life. Additionally, the arm animations, which also operate independently from the rest, add even more personality, whether they're reacting in fear to enemies or celebrating as they reach home. And that's the end of Chapter 6 of How Moons of Darsalon Was Made. In Chapter 7, we'll continue discussing the animation manager, focusing on how ladder animations work and how arm movements are handled when aiming. Subscribe so you don't miss it.